Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem, and the problem's name is alternating digit sum. So, in this question, we're given a positive integer n. Each digit of n has a sign according to the following rules. The most significant digit is assigned a positive sign. Each other digit has an opposite sign to its adjacent digits. We have to return the sum of all the digits with its corresponding sign. So, this is the function given to us, alternating digit sum, and this is the input integer n given to us, which we have to work on. And the return type is an integer. So we need to return an integer as the output. Now let's take a look at the examples and see how this question can be solved. So in the first example, we are given n where n is equal to 5 to 1. The most significant bit here is 5 which is assigned positive. So we start with a positive digit and the adjacent digit is 2. So it is assigned a negative digit and its adjacent digit is 1 which is again a positive digit. So we start with plus 5, minus 2 and plus 1 which will give us 4. So we return 4 as the output. So let's take the first example. Here n is given as 5 to 1. Let's treat this as a string so that we can iterate through the input from left to right and access each character at a time. We need to find the overall sum right so let's declare a variable called sum and initialize it to the first digit because the first digit will start from positive, negative, positive. So since the first digit is positive you can directly assign it instead of assigning sum as 0 and then adding the first digit you can directly add uh, the first digit into the variable sum. So this is 0 1 2 now let's move on i will now point here since this is an odd digit we need to subtract that character's value from the sum so this will be minus 2 let's move forward i is pointing here so this is an even digit so if you are coming across an even digit let's add that value into the sum so now the overall value is 5 minus 2 plus 1 that is equal to 4 so sum is now having the output 4 and that is the output so let's take a look at the code here. This is the function and this is the return type and this is the input n given to us. This input n is initially an integer. So we can't directly iterate through an integer using a for loop. Converting that integer into a string by appending it with double quotes. So num is now having the value 5 to 1 as a string for this example. So num is equal to 5 to 1 and I'm declaring a variable sum of integer data type and initializing it with the 0th character and converting it to an integer. So I'm accessing 5 and converting it to an integer and storing it inside sum. Now let's iterate through the input string from i equal to 1 till the end of the string. So i equal to 1 right equal to 5 to 1 and these are the index positions. Now i will start from here and it will check if the index position i is an odd or even number. So this is for odd. So when you divide it by 2 and if the remainder is 1 it means an odd number and this is an even number block. Since i is now pointing at 1 it is an odd number so sum is equal to now it is an odd number so we need to subtract it so 5 minus 2 let's increment i in the next iteration i is here now i is an even number so this block will be executed so we need to add that character's value inside sum so it is 1 so sum is finally equal to 4 so sum is now having the value 4 so we return it which is the expected output here. You can try for other examples, but this is the overall code. The time complexity of this approach is O of n, where n is the length of the input num, and the space complexity is constant because we are not using any extra space. That's it guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.